Often your professors will ask you to include a mix of scholarly and popular sources in your assignments. This quick tutorial will show you how to use both the library's databases and individual news sources to locate popular literature with some tips and tricks along the way. We're going to start with a few individual resources. The first is Mother Jones. It's an American magazine that focuses on news, commentary, and investigative reporting on topics including politics, the environment, human rights, health, and culture. So to get there, I'm just going to simply use Google and type in Mother Jones. It's the first one that pops up. So you've probably been to news sources similar to this. Um, Mother Jones is a print publication and an electronic publication, meaning there's a print magazine version that you can buy in stores, um, and there's also the electronic version, which is here. So to search for content on a news website like this, you typically, you know, obviously you can browse the categories, or you can use the search bar if you are looking for something particular. So if I was searching for articles that Mother Jones published on a particular topic, this is where I would enter my keywords or phrases. Um, and so just for the example, I am going to use Confederate monuments. You can see I already searched for that. And we'll see what comes up. Okay, so a few things I want to point out. It's sorting the results by relevance currently. If you were looking for the newest articles that came out on Confederate monuments, you could switch this to newest or vice versa, oldest. So it'll just rearrange your results. Um, you can click on the article to read it, scroll through, see if anything looks good. So this is fairly straightforward. Um, you can browse, like I said, or you can search using keywords. So when we're thinking about keywords to put in the box, we, we kind of go with the mantra of less is more. So try to limit it to one phrase um, what, just when you're starting off. You can always add more. Okay, so Mother Jones is one place to find popular literature. I'm going to show you The Atlantic, which is another publication, so The Atlantic. Um, so this is a magazine that provides daily coverage and analysis of breaking news, politics, and international affairs, education, technology, health, science, and culture. So if we go into The Atlantic, you'll see it's set up very similar to Mother Jones. Um, there's, you know, this kind of nice scrolling feature where you can see what are the most recently published issues, what are the hot issues. Um, you can also click on popular to see, you know, what are most people reading. If you were looking to see what was published the most recent, click on latest. And similarly to Mother Jones, we have this little magnifying glass, which is where we can search um, for things that we are looking for. So if I wanted to type in my search terms, I could type in the same, I'm gonna use the same search term just to kind of keep things um, consistent in this tutorial. Okay, so it's searching for articles that The Atlantic has published on this concept of Confederate monuments. What I wanna point out right here is these are ads, okay? This happens to be, the second one happens to be from The Atlantic, but um, there are other, they're pulling in content from other um, publications. So these publications have paid The Atlantic to have their content show up first. So keep that in mind when you are evaluating popular resources, whether it's you know a blog or a magazine like this or any kind of online publication. Keep in mind about the advertisements. Um, keep in mind about who is creating the content, what's their agenda, why are they creating the content, and what I always like to do when I um, and on, am on like a new site that I may not be super familiar with. Um, typically at the bottom, or sometimes it's at the top, 
there's always an about. And so you can click to learn about like, who are they? How are they funded? Um, what are, you know, what's their mission statement? And sometimes that helps you determine like, is there heavy bias in this content? What should I be looking out for? So that's gonna apply for when you're evaluating all popular culture. Um, just to, to go down here, very similar um, to Mother Jones, the results are showing up. And up here, I think exact same thing. So we can search by the relevance. So that's um, what the Atlantic thinks might be the most relevant articles for you based on your search terms. Um, but if you do it by date, it seems like the Atlantic will um, itemize these by the most recently published. So you can see this one was two days ago, four days ago, onward. Um, okay, so that is the Atlantic. The last one I'm going to show you is the New York Times. And as students at Roger Williams, you all, all have four year um, subscriptions uh, free of cost to you to the New York Times. Um, so I encourage you to just create a free login. Um, you can put it on, I think, up to seven devices. So you can share it with family members, um, friends. Okay, so the New York Times website, um, again, looks pretty similar to Mother Jones, but this is a newspaper. Um, it's an American newspaper. It's based in New York City. Um, it has worldwide influence and readership. The New York Times has long been regarded within the industry as a national newspaper of record, meaning um, its reputation is high. So again, because this is a, a, a physical print newspaper and an electronic version, um, it's set up like a newspaper would be with um, different columns. So if you were actually holding this, you would turn to the sports column, you would turn to the arts column and section. So you can scroll. This is the most kind of up-to-date happenings in um, our country and around the world. And then again, here's that magnifying glass. If I wanted to search across this newspaper for content, um, this is where I would just type in my search terms to see if the New York Times has published any articles on my topic. Okay, so they again are sorting by relevance. You can change this. What I want to point out, um, and this goes for any kind of popular literature, especially in newspapers, um, there are different, like I said, sections of the newspaper and immediately I'm, I'm highlighting this this is an opinion piece. So that means someone wrote in an article based on their opinion, okay? And so it's perfectly acceptable to include opinion pieces in your research as long as you are explicit about where the information came from and that it is the opinion of one individual, right? It may not be representative um, and there will, there will be heavy bias um, in those articles. So opinion, this is coming from the politics section. So just, just be mindful when you find an article, you kind of check this out um, to be, give yourself a little more context about what you're reading and, you know, who is the author that's creating the content? Why should you trust them? Right? Okay. So that is basically how you search across, um, individual um, individual news sources, but that could take a lot of time. <laughs> so if you were looking for articles on Confederate monuments, but you wanted to search across like a lot of newspapers at once, the library has a database that will help you do that. So you'll first want to direct your browser to rwu.edu slash library. That brings you right to the homepage. Under the search box, you're going to click on the database's A to Z list. And the database we're using today is called ProQuest News and Newspapers. So I'm just going to go right over here to the P because I know that that database will be in this listing. And you'll start to see lots of ProQuest databases. Um, so the one we are looking for is right here, ProQuest News and Newspapers. 
And this screen might look familiar to anyone who's used um, a ProQuest database to search for scholarly articles or um, any kind of articles that a, a ProQuest database may have. So just like when you're searching for scholarly articles, we want to use keywords to search instead of you know entering entire sentences in here. Um, so we really want to focus on identifying keywords that will be helpful for our search, that will be relevant. And you have to keep in mind that this doesn't function like Google. Google is very smart. If I type an entire sentence into Google, it will pick out the keywords for me and my search results will um, be reflective of those keywords. But with databases, we have to do that work manually. So again, I'm, I'm just searching for just a really brief search on Confederate monuments. Um, and sometimes it's helpful to put quotation marks around. And I am, I could choose to limit if I was looking for really recent um, articles, maybe in the last 30 days, maybe in the last year, I could limit that, but I'm for the sake of this, not going to do that. So you can see that we have nearly 9,000 results, which is a lot. And that is because this database is searching across nearly 3,000 different um, newspapers, magazines, trade journals, reports, audio and video works, etc. Um, so if we, again, if we wanted to limit our results, we could. Um, and something that I also like to show students as like a quick tip and reminder is that sometimes journalists um, and even researchers call terms different things. So I am searching for Confederate monuments, um, but we know that sometimes people refer to them as Confederate, Confederate statues, right? So for me to search and make sure that I'm actually getting everything that's relevant, I would change this so that my search is going to find everything Confederate monuments or Confederate statues, okay? Um, and I'm actually going to add a third term because sometimes I have seen them called memorials as well. And again, I am going to put quotation marks around these just to keep my phrases together. Um, and I'm gonna change this to or. So my search results will be searching for Confederate monuments or Confederate statues or Confederate memorials. So any articles containing those terms. So, and I am going to limit within the last three months. We'll see what the public dialogue has been in the last three months on this issue of the removal of Confederate statues and memorials. Um, and as I say that out loud, that's another key term that I could add in. So if I was finding, you know, just articles that were just talking about Confederate monuments in general, I could add a row and say, I want all of these terms and I want to include the word removal. So we still have a lot of results, but I'm hoping that they will be far more relevant to what we are looking for. Um, and you can see the results are highlighting um, my search term and it's showing me what kind of publication it is. So this article comes from a newspaper. This one comes from a blog or a podcast newspaper. I can also, um, if I click on publication title, I can choose which um, newspapers I want to see the articles from, or if it's a magazine or a blog, whatever. Um, let's see, Wall Street Journal. And you'll see that some of these are online and um, that would be like the, what, sh what is showing up in the print version. Um, if I didn't want, um, say, we'll exclude the Huffington Post just for an example, and now my search results will update and you can see now I only have 34 um, results, articles that were published in these newspapers 
um, and I know I know a little bit about these newspapers and like I said you'd want to do your research on where you're getting your content from and I've also limited to the last three months so this should be fairly relevant content um, so this is really going to help me get a grasp of the public dialogue about this topic right now um, so those are just some helpful tips and tricks as always, if you need help finding scholarly or popular resources or evaluating them, please reach out to your librarian.